Bill Common, meine Freunde, to a journey to a simpler time, a gentler time, a kinder time. That time being the week ending April 1st, 1962. In at number 10 is Floyd Kramer with his jaunty Chattanooga Choo Choo, up number 12 from the previous weeks. In the early 1960s, Kramer was a pretty reliable hitmaker, his biggest being Last Date, which made number two in 1960. Ironically, Kramer played piano on the song that kept it from number one, Are You Lonesome Tonight by Elvis Presley. He'd been working with Elvis since Heartbreak Hotel. Entirely self-taught, Kramer's slipnote style was one of the defining elements of the Nashville sound. Next up at number nine, it's Little Miss Dynamite, Brenda Lee and her big hit, Break It To Me Gently. Born into the most abject poverty in rural Georgia during World War II, Lee began her professional career at age 10 on the Ozark Jubilee, and across the late 50s and early 60s, had a long string of hits before hitting big on the country charts in the 70s. Break It To Me Gently is the kind of ballad that makes you wonder how such a huge voice could come out of Lee's four foot nine inch frame. Number eight is the uniquely annoying Hey Baby by Bruce Channel. Channel was not strictly a one hit wonder, he did have another hit here in Australia in 1968. Channel grew to dislike life on the road and settled in in Nashville, whereupon he became a successful songwriter. Hey Baby of course went on to be an annoying song sung by winning football teams as they do that stupid jumping up and down on the spot dance and waste perfectly good champagne. The indisputable number seven is this week Elvis Presley with the song that was number one last time we visited 1962, Can't Help Falling In Love With You from the movie Blue Hawaii. Elvis's output the 60s was notoriously spotty, alternating between sentimental pabulum like this and the singles either side of it, the excellent little sister and the great soft pop of Good Luck Charm. It's also the final song Elvis was ever to sing live in Indianapolis, 51 days before he died. Sixth spot is taken by an OG non-rock and roll badass, he of the bowler hat, stripy vest and beatnik beard, the first English solo act ever to have a US number one, Mr, and you best call him Mr, Acca Bilk, with Stranger on the Shore. Fans of Mitchell and Webb's radio shows will know the song well as it does duty as its theme music. Many years later, Bilk was drafted into Van Morrison's band for the excellent Down the Road album, and in 2018, four years after his death, Morrison overdubbed an outtake of his You're Driving Me Crazy album by way of tribute. At five, we have Chubby Checker with The Godfather 2 of Twist Records. Let's twist again. The success of the record was such that its prequel re-entered the charts for another run. Curiously, Chubby's biggest hit in my hometown wasn't a twist record, it was another dance craze record, Limbo Rock. Four to go, and it's an interesting one to start with, Kenny Ball's Midnight in Moscow, which was originally titled, and I kid you not, Evenings in Moscow Oblast. It made number two in England, Australia and the US, kept from number one in the US by Hey Baby. The song was also played in the Russian Victory Day Parade of 2015. It's not the greatest thing we've presented here, although it's a darn sight better than Hey Baby, and it could benefit from a guest appearance by Akka Bilk. At number three this week is Dion with his second biggest hit after the previous run around Sue, The Wanderer. Dion had an astounding 39 US top 40 hits in the late 50s to the early 60s with his distinctive blend of rock and roll, doo-wop, folk and urban gospel. Now that's all well and good, but the coolest thing about Dion is that, along with Bob Dylan, he's the only rock singer on the front cover of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. He's there on the second row next to Tony Curtis. He was slipped into the design by Peter Blake, who was a big fan. Number two, the penultimate number, brings us to the Academy Award winning actor, folklorist, top Christmas themed vocal artiste, radio broadcaster and communist, Burl Ives, who is in the middle of a three song run of top tens with Call Me Mr. In Between, Funny Way of Laughing and this one, A Little Bitty Tear. The song was written by one of the great country songwriters, Hank Cochran. He also wrote I Fall to Pieces and She's Got You for Patsy Cline. 
facts, facts, facts. They don't care about your feelings. They don't even particularly care if they're right, which is convenient for their inclusion in Fowl's fantastic world of facts. Biggest riser this week is Roy Orbison, whose sultry dream baby shot up from number 40 to number 14. It's like the old hometown woke up one morning and said, what, Roy Orbison's got a new record out? And went out and bought it en masse. While the flippiest, floppiest, flyingest tune on the top 40 this week is Chubby Checker's original The Twist, down eight places to 22. Highest debutante this week was Bob Dylan's rock and roll mentor Bobby B who crashed into the charts at 31, which please don't ask about Barbara, so we won't. And the longest running record on the charts is the astonishing Moon River by Jerry Butler, which lasted 41 weeks on the charts, watching 15 number one records fall by the wayside over the course of its run. So, without further ado, we hand over to Monty to drum us into number one of this week's hits. Bash those bongos, you maniacal monkey. Number one is the magnificent Bobby Darren with his biggest Australian hit, Multiplication. This was Darren's forte, the self-penned, percolating pop rocker, featuring his impeccable phrasing. Darren sang this in his film debut come September, while simultaneously wooing the lovely but tragically damaged Sandra D. Multiplication spent six weeks at number one. Vegas awaited for Darren, but he was always on borrowed time. And suffering from sepsis and dementia, he passed away after open heart surgery in December 1973. What a long, strange trip it's been, fellow travellers, and it's my sincere and fervent hope that we will meet together in good fellowship for the next time we take that long, strange trip back into the foreign country that is the past. <laughs>